Hello, everyone. Pat Dana MMA back with episode 30 of my DWCS breakdowns. Happy to have hit another milestone with you guys. Going to be getting into an intriguing featherweight matchup between Yadier Devaye and Antonio Montero. Really fun fight between two good grappler stylistically. So we're going to be getting into Yadier Devaye first. So Devaye is from Cuba. He is 5'9 and 28 years old. He has a 7-0 professional record with two knockout wins and two submission wins, and he fought in Fury FC out of Texas. He is a southpaw that uses his jab to kind of just move closer and get into boxing range, where he likes to unleash his clean, quick, and powerful left straight that just he uses constantly and really loves to use as one of his main weapons of striking offense. He also rips it to the body, and it's a very powerful punch that is probably his best weapon on the feet. He also has a nice left hook that he throws on weird angles, almost like a two, and it kind of like it's kind of hard to differentiate if he's throwing a hook or straight sometimes because of the way he throws his hooks just on awkward angles. He also has a lead right hook that he likes to throw a lot just to kind of like check his opponents and keep them away. He throws it behind his straight and likes to use it to the body as well. It's a really nice punch to the body kind of just rips it in there. And then the Valle also throws these winging overhand lefts out of like space that he will throw a lot and he misses them a decent amount but if one of them will land it definitely has a bit of power behind it Devalier also uses a lot of leg kicks and his left body kick to kind of you know use his kickboxing to dictate that pace of the fight a little bit he constantly is chopping away at his opponent's lead leg and he also has some flying knees that you'll see very occasionally but every once in a while you'll see him come out with a flying knee he did it to start one of his fights so that was pretty interesting but overall devaye is just really low volume and repetitive on the feet he kind of just does the same things over and over again and doesn't really throw much I, like in general doesn't have a lot of volume to his game his striking defense definitely could be better he eats a lot of straight punches and eats the jab a bit he also doesn't react too well to being hit and just doesn't have good range management. He overthrows into strikes a lot and makes it so that he'll throw himself into a bad position because he missed a big punch that he shouldn't have thrown as hard as he did. And Devaye also, if backed up against the cage, can be kind of hit and teed off on a bit. But in the clinch, he is pretty strong. He has some really solid knees and elbows. And some really solid body lock takedowns. He really has a nice leg grab takedown, though. That's what that's his really quick takedown that he kind of just snatches up and immediately gets you to the ground. Once he gets you to the ground, he's really good at getting into dominant positions on top. And it's really hard to get him off. Off once he is there he has some very quick back takes and likes to threaten the choke but he's not great at actually finishing once it is on the ground he does have some really solid submissions but he he will slip out of like chokes and arm bar attempts or whatever at times and you will kind of see those deficiencies in his submission offense once he gets to the back though he is a very very tight body triangle that he can hold for basically entire rounds if he gets it once he's on your back like i said he is definitely going to stay there it's just about if he has the finishing potential when he's on it. He also has some pretty decent ground and pound. He really just uses it more to set up his submissions, and he does use some elbows on the ground. But also, Deval kind of does telegraph his takedown entries at times. It just is a bit slow from shooting at a distance. He really doesn't set up his shots too well. Overall, I'd say Deval has some bad wrestling defense, but good grappling offense. He'll threaten leg locks if he's caught on his back, and he is very comfortable, but almost too comfortable there to the point where he'll stay there for unnecessary long amounts of time and lose minutes of the fight for no reason he has a really nice guillotine and he'll roll it into mount when he's in it he'll jump in standing as well he is a, like his guillotine is a beautiful tool that i think we could definitely see in this fight and he has some really nice arm bars as well and he will win minutes on his back just because of his submission offense but it's just not something you want to see him being on his back as much as he is with the valle though he really does know how to steal close rounds late there are, have been a couple times where it's been a close round and he'll do something with 30 seconds or less left and really just steal that round away. But Devaye does struggle with cardio a bit. He doesn't look great in round three, despite him winning a couple decisions on his record. Round three just does not seem to be a strong point for him. He does seem to lose a couple round threes throughout his career. Now, moving on to Brazil's Antonio Montero. So Montero is 5'7", 29 years old. He has a 17-4-1 record with three wins by knockout and five wins by submission. He had he fought in Shudo, Brazil. His last fight was actually his only fight at Fed 
featherweight since 2017. He's really only fought at lightweight and welterweight recently. Montero is very fast and twitchy. He throws a lot of feints and uses those to kind of try to set up his strikes a bit. He has a really nice jab and a good straight right when he throws it with power, but he doesn't really set down on it as much as he should. He has some very sneaky uppercuts that you'll see him throw, especially later into fights if he is dictating the fight on the feet. You'll see him start to really use those uppercuts to try to put his opponent out. And he has a pretty good check left hook that he also targets the body with and he usually just targets the body with all of these punches that i previously mentioned he likes to just kind of mix those up to the body a little bit here and there and he actually has hurt opponents to the body before he does throw some winging overheads and hooks though and he doesn't have the best technique to those he just kind of wings them out there but if they do land they do land with some pretty nice power and he just kind of likes to get into wild brawls on the feet a bit too much recklessly swings and just kind of will trust his chin he rolls with punches instead of blocking most of the time which it does work for him because he actually has a really good chin but he does get caught by the straight punches because he can't roll with those as well he has never been ko'd though so whatever he's doing defensively has been working for him montero uses his leg kicks very well and also throws his head kicks and teeth kicks to the body targets all three levels in different ways and does definitely uses his kicks pretty solidly but he has some really nice flying knees regular knees just he uses those knees up close and really knows how to dig those into the opponent if montero catches you on the cage he will tee off on you he really won't give you any room to breathe but he does lose speed a bit as the fight goes just in some of his fights as it gets into like the third round or so you can really tell he slows down and he isn't the same quick fast twitchy fighter he was earlier in the fight and in higher volume fights and where the pace and the pressure is put on him he will start to gas out and as you've seen in some of his fights where he's gassed out bad in three rounds just because guys have put a really heavy pace and pressure on him early montero also is a bit open to the body and can be mauled against the cage and the clinch he has been dominated in the clinch before by opponents and just kind of beaten that way specifically in fights but he does have some pretty well-timed takedowns just not the quickest shots but Definitely some good, really good timing on his takedowns. And he has some pretty dominant control on top. He really gives his opponent no space and no room to breathe and just kind of smothers them. And he lets a big grounded pound elbow some massive elbows and some really big punches he has some really effective grounded pound montero also gets the dominant positions fairly easily and has really good back control and a nice rear naked choke that he'll, you will see him use he also has some solid arm triangles and some good submission defense but i will say he gets his neck caught while shooting way too much and del valle seems to really like to catch people's necks while they shoot so that's something that does worry me a bit in this fight montero does have decent takedown defense but by better grab they can take him down and kind of just control him on the ground and so there are times he's been caught on the bottom by better grapplers and just dominated and kind of smashed and just had it really put on him with that said though montero has been five rounds like i said before he can wear down if someone puts a pressure and pace on him early but he has been to decision 11 times it has been five rounds before so in, in certain fights, in lower volume fights that he prefers to fight in, similar to how Deval fights, his cardio is usually fine, but if guys put more of a pressure and a pace on him, he could gas out for sure. So for my prediction for this fight, this is a very close fight between two guys that I feel have a lot of similarities. I think this fight will mostly take place on the feet, considering both of these guys really just like to shoot and that's their main weapon. I think the, they will brawl it out on the feet for a little bit. I think the Val's power in his left hand is a little bit more than anything Montero has on the feet, but I think Montero has a better arsenal of strikes overall and can catch the Val with more. I don't see this fight really ending in a KO, though. I could see either of these guys potentially submitting each other or beating each other by decision, but I don't think either of these guys will really knock each other out. Montero's never been knocked out, and while the Val doesn't react too great to strikes he's never really been hurt i think yadier devout is going to be just a little bit too smart for montero and i think he's going to be able to have the right game plan in this fight to just edge it out by decision i could very well see him catching montero in a guillotine though Montero does leave his neck open when he shoots and Delval has jumped guillotines against people standing before because they've left their neck open on shots so I could very well see him catching him in a guillotine here but I'm gonna go a little bit safer and say Yadier Delval gets the decision win here in a pretty close fight I just think Delval is a little bit more dominant in certain positions and if he does get there we'll be able to control Montero I hope you all enjoyed episode 30 of my DWCS breakdowns please do not forget to like comment and subscribe and please tune in for my last breakdown which will be up tomorrow before the fights I hope you all enjoyed it I'm, I'm so sad our season's almost coming to an end I'll catch you guys in the next one though thank you for watching